Hey, if I were to ask you what the probability of a number between one and nine showing up randomly in your life, you're probably gonna say that each number would be given equal weight. From a probability standpoint, you would take the number one, meaning any one of the possibilities, and divide that by nine, or the total number of outcomes, to get the probability that at any given time, a number would show up about 11% of the time. But what if I said that probability doesn't follow numbers in real life? Instead, there's a law within probability and statistics called Benford's Law. And what Benford's Law states is that the numbers one, two, three, and four show up a significant amount of time more than the numbers five through nine. In fact, the numbers one, two, three, and four show up about 70% of the time compared to the 30% of the time that a number five through nine would show up. So you're probably asking a question that I asked as well. Is this accurate? And that's a great question. So today I wanna to talk about two things. One, is Benford's law true? And two, if it is true, how can that apply to us? So the first question we have to ask is, is Benford's law true? And to help test that theory, I'm going to look at a place that has more data than other areas in my life. And that actually is a newspaper. And I'm gonna look at the money section because there are typically more numbers in the money section of the newspaper than anywhere else. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna circle the first digit of each number, I'm gonna tally those up and put it into a graph to see if it follows the general Benford's law. As you can see, in general, my graph did follow Benford's law. But you may be asking, hey, Ryan, your graph does differ from Benford's law as well. And that is because the data set in which I was working with only captured about 200 plus data sets, where I was only working with about 200 plus numbers. In order to get that even graph that is shown in Benford's graph, I would need to work with a much higher data set to be able to better smooth the graph. So now that we know Benford's law holds true, we need to ask ourselves how we can use this in our everyday life. The first is a real world application, and the second is for entertainment purposes. In the real life application of Benford's law, corporations, governments, and individuals use the law to help detect fraud. This usually occurs in accounting firms, uh, CPAs, or in reviewing financial documents. But what they do is they look at the general law of Benford and see if the data that they are reviewing follows the general trend of Benford's law. If it doesn't, it may indicate that there is fraud. It doesn't mean that there is fraud, but it's a way for them to identify if numbers follow a general pattern. And if not, they can ask more questions. The second application of Benford's law is for entertainment purposes. And really this is a way for you to potentially get a free drink or a free meal out of some of your friends. And so let's take a look at how that happens here. What do you think the most common number is? Bro, like maybe seven? Good choice. You wanna play a little game? Maybe the loser buys the other a drink? You're on, dude. All right, I'm going to write the numbers one through nine on a sheet of paper. We're then going to split up into two teams. Team one is gonna be the numbers one through three. The team, the second team is gonna be numbers five through nine. Four is gonna be a dead space. So, what team would you like to be? Dude, that's the easiest decision ever. Team two, bro. I've got a five number chance of, you know, getting it right and you only got three. Pfft, you're on, you're going down. Yeah, I get that. I'll take team number one. And how we're going to play is we're going to ask you to think of two completely random things that have to do with numbers somehow. We're then going to multiply those together and we're gonna look at the result. We'll take a look at the first digit and whatever that corresponds to or that the team that it corresponds to gets the point. Cool? Let's start with the weight of Saturn times the mass of uranium. When we multiply that, we get about 223 kilograms squared. And when we look at the first digit, that's a two, so huh, my point. 
Dang it. All right, let's talk about the depth of Lake Tahoe times the price of an Amazon stock. You're getting more specific, uh, but when we multiply that out, it comes out to slightly more than three million, and three is in my number category, so another point me. Oh, man! Okay, what about the height of the Seattle Space Needle times the length of the Amazon River in squared feet? I mean, you are, I mean, you are getting pretty specific, but even when we do that, it comes out to 12 billion square feet and well, one is definitely in my category. So point me, I think you owe me a drink. Oh, dang, I don't know how you're doing this, but I don't like it. But a bet's a bet, I'll pay up. That is Benford's Law. Is it something that you're gonna come across every single day? Probably not, unless you're an accountant, a CPA, or dealing a lot with numbers uh, day in and day out. But is, this, is it something cool that I think you may find interesting? I hope so. That's it for this episode of Take 10. We'll see you next time.